Hello lovely people, we have another amplifier review and measurement overview. Today we're going to have a look at a recoil 4 channel. This one is class AB, model number REA600.4. So if you watched my channel a few weeks ago, I had this one little guy, which was a D-class a model number di 1200.4 and this as a budget amplifier it performed extremely extremely good and measured very very well especially for the form factor that it is so uh, i would like to thank frank from hepa king for sending me this because he had both of these amplifiers because he was testing himself like what is better class d or class ab so this is going to be a better comparison than the Alpines that I have because the Alpines that I reviewed class D versus AB they were totally totally different from different like ages like probably 10-20 years difference between those amplifiers but this one this is a modern class AB amplifier and both of these are priced kind of similarly so uh, I think in the US is something like a hundred hundred fifty dollars I seen this one in the UK for close to 200 pounds I haven't seen one this one for sale because it's kind of brand newish. So this is going to be a very good opportunity to compare a modern from the same brand uh, class D amplifier versus class AB. So let's open the box and let's have a look what's inside. So yes, I did open up the amplifier because I wanted to have a look what's inside, how it looks like. Uh, first of all, let's go through some basic specs. So this is a data sheet from the previous, the Class D, and that one claimed uh, 4 times 200, 4 times 300 into this. So we got uh, not those numbers, but I wasn't testing at 14.4. I always test at a lower voltage, at 13, 13.2. So I always expect to have le uh, lesser numbers than this. But 4 times 200 advertised, this class AB amplifier here, which is a 600.4, which is this one, it's advertised at 4 times 95. So like half the power, more than half the power rating of the class D. And if you compare the size difference, so this one, it's way, way smaller if we put it like together, like that. So this is more than half the size of the class AB and has twice as power. Now the question is, what kind of power this one has? So we would expect that class AB, obviously everybody says you have D4 bass for mid bass and class AB for mids and tweets. And I would imagine everybody would run that. If they would have like recoil amps, the small D class is gonna be for the mid bass because it has a lot of power, it's class D, it's dirty, which we measured and we saw that that one is super clean, very, very clean, as clean as my Alpine. But we expect much better numbers from this one just because it's class AB. So are we going to bust the myth today or we're going to confirm it? Is this class AB going to measure better or worse than the class D? Because it's the same manufacturer, same price range, same uh, kind of release period, so they're not like 10 years apart. It is a modern one, so we, we will have a look. Now, uh, I like this amplifier. It, it looks cool. It has two fuses. You won't be able to see, but it's 35 amps each. So that's 70 amps. That one had 100 amps. I like these uh, terminals much more than the fork ones. And what I like about these as well, they are angled. I don't know if you can see, they're going angled. So when you put a cable in, it's gonna go like this and it's gonna squish it and it's a very, very tight connection. So I love this one. Uh, not many adjustments, just a very typical, very typical adjustments. Uh, oh, by the way, so one of this is broke. So I think it got broken in transit but it doesn't affect anything because you can still shift stuff. So I was measuring everything on full full. It's not a problem at all. So for this one, you can use either two channels or either four channels for all output. It has just power and protect, no clip light, but it's totally fine. Now inside is something interesting because 
I'm not a circuit board specialist or whatever. Uh, however, this looks to me an extremely, extremely old design. I don't know if all modern class AB amplifiers are like that, but this were like with loads of jumpers, loads of discrete components. I don't see any like ICs or anything. I think these are like transistors and stuff. So everything like very very old so i don't know i don't know if it's good or bad i don't know if it's quality or not i think i just bent this up by accident but yeah you have another board for all the adjustments here and yeah it is what it is one power supply is seated very good no wiggles no nothing everything sits still everything is very nice we have some kind of uh, probably board flex, I would imagine. Yeah, we do have board flex. I don't know if you're able to see that. Yeah, the board does flex because you have one mounting there and one there and nothing in the middle. But yeah, loads of loads of jumpers. Looks like very, very old. Like from the front, it looks brand new. From the inside, it looks very, very old. So the question is, how does it measure? So without any further ado, I think we're gonna jump into the laptop and let's have a look how this amplifier actually measures and is it better or worse than the Class D? So the first measurement that I did was this and I was like, wow, okay. So what we see here is we have THD going down as on all the amplifiers. We have the knee here, but something here. So the power level is between one watt and like 10 watts. There's a massive, massive bulge of distortion. And that distortion is the second harmonic. Uh, THD is there, yeah, THD and second harmonic. The third one is a bit lower, but it's still there. And I was like, wow, okay, do I have a bad channel or something? So then I started measuring other channels. So this was channel one. This was channel two, which is smaller, but it's still there. This was channel three, which is oh, something a bit more, but yeah, okay. And we can still see this second harmonic bulge here. And this was channel four. So out of all of these channels, the only channel four measures uh, okay. And all the other ones, especially channel one is like this. So uh, what can cause this? Uh, I'm not sure. Can it be a faulty amplifier? Could be. Can it be a faulty channel? Uh, probably no, because if it would be a channel, this exhibit, uh, this would be only in one channel, but we can see even on channel two, and channel three, we have kind of the same thing, only the channel four is like this. So my thinking, and it can be totally, totally wrong, I'm not arguing that, is that it has to do something with the actual layout of the PCB, and maybe a mistake was done while copying the design, or something like, I don't know, but this is, this is huge. It's like in the normal listening levels, which is like five watts here, and on the lower, you have almost half a percent of distortion on channel one, which is really, really is unacceptable. So my thinking, it has something to do with the actual PCB and the design. Maybe it was a very, very old design that they just copied, because we know that uh, these companies they don't make they don't design their own things they just take a design and copy it or just ask a like a factory to make something for them and this i would assume it's just badly implemented design so for all the because i couldn't just say okay this is a bad amplifier and just throw it away and that's it so i did all the measurements anyway however i did all the measurements on channel four so I will give them like a benefit of the doubt and say that it might be like just this amplifier might be bad and all the other ones are good. It would be very cool if somebody could measure the same amplifier somewhere else. And just to confirm, is it my amplifier that has this or all the amplifiers have it like inherited?
And this is the main benefit of these measurements because if you put this amplifier on an amp dyno, it's gonna show you the max power and it's not gonna show anything else and you're not gonna be able to see that. Only by doing this, what I'm doing, by measuring the sweep, which is THD versus level, only then you can see this. Otherwise, it would just slip through and it would be claimed as a good amplifier just because it does rated power. So again, amp dynos do not show all the information about the amplifier. So just to give a benefit of a doubt, I disregard all the one, two, three channels and I measured only channel four and I measured everything on channel four. So channel four, let's have a look what it gives. The numbers are actually very, very good, surprisingly. So everything is below 0 0.35, which is very, very cool. My Alpine amplifiers, uh, the class D dig deep down to something like this. So it does reach this at 10 watts. It's a narrow dip here. So the cleanest is between like six and 20 watts. So for the mid range, it, it would be perfect. However, we see, uh, yeah, is dominated by THD. Not by noise, noise is slower. So noise is lower, is dominated by THD. Uh, yeah. Well, distortion drain amplifier. Then we have extremely clean output all the way up to like 60 watts. So obviously we're not gonna look at the max power because again, uh, my voltage is different. And 1% we have at about 70 watts. So it's not as bad, four times 70 down to one and four times 60, super, super clean below 0 0.03. So this is amazing. If all the amplifiers would measure like this and like at this part above like 20 watts, they kind of do, all of them measure kind of the same. It's just this bump here. So it's good, it's good. Let's compare this to the class D. So this one was the class D and we can see that if we draw a line here where is the cleanest, class D uh, is not as clean, especially at the higher um, power levels. At higher power levels, it rises to 0.1 and it is indeed cleanest, cleaner, the AB. However, if we bridge, if you remember this recoil was very good bridged. So if I take at the bridge measurement, which is this one, then things change a bit. And now we can see that this is the minimum and this is the minimum. So it's kinda the same cleanliness from both, but in different power ranges. So the class EB is cleanest here between, as I mentioned, like, six and 15 watts. And the class D is the cleanest between 15 and 50. So then you would think that, yes, you could use this one for mid bass because it needs more power. And you could use this one, the AB for mids and tweets. However, again, if we have a look, THD for this one, it goes lower than the noise on the class D. On this class AB, the THD is the dominant component in all the distortion. If we have a look at this one, so you can see that THD is the dominant thing. It's not the noise, it's the THD. Usually it is the noise, like on this class D. So class D, you can see the noise is on top and THD is lower. However, on this AB, the THD is the dominant. And we have, again, another blub, blimp at 1k for some reason, I don't know. So it is THD plus noise and noise, a spike, uh, I don't know why. And the class D is very linear. So as I mentioned, the distortion kind of rises a little bit at the higher frequencies, but it's linear. The class AB is just a mishmash of things, I don't know. It is the cleanest like here between 100 and 400 Hertz but it has a bit more distortion at the lower end. This blip, I don't know what that is, and rising distortion towards the top end, which is not very good if you're planning to use it for tweeters, especially if you have a third harmonic dominated at 6K. Um, yeah, the second harmonic is lower, 
and is dominated by third harmonic and THD. So I would assume, and again, this is my naive assumption, that this amplifier would not sound sweet and it would not sound good. It would sound harsh and not pleasant. Uh, yeah. Uh, from all the other stuff, we're not going to go into everything. Let's have a look at bridged. So bridged compared to regular, we see that on regular, on one channel, channel four, uh, it's much cleaner than on bridged. There we go. Bridged uh, increases the distortion, increases basically everything. The second, what's surprising is this one. The second harmonic is way down there. The third one is dominated and the TD is dominated. So again, this just confirms that it's not gonna sound very, very nice and good. We do have quite a lot of power. Uh, it is cleanest all the way up to 170 watts bridged. And we have at 1% 200 watts. So that's loads and loads of power. The power is kind of cleanish, the THD wise, but the components of the THD, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't look good. Now, what else? Let's have a look at the actual, these measurements. So we have typical forums. And we can see some kind of, uh, I would want to say oscillating, but it's like there's loads of harmonics, loads. And we have uh, TG plus noise minus 73.1, which is not that bad, which is not bad, but the harmonics are, they are like 80 dB down, but there's loads of them. This is the problem. There's loads. And for some reason I have one here, something blip and one here. If we compare it to the class D, Class D looks to be cleaner. See, there's less harmonics at the higher frequencies with a Class D. However, the Class D is 69, so 70 versus 73. So pure THD wise, the AB is cleaner. However, that's the thing. This is the thing which you cannot compare like two numbers just by looking at the actual numbers, but you have to look at the composition. So the class AB has loads of noise at the top end, and it has a lower floor noise, especially at the bottom end. Class AB, if you can see, we have a rising noise floor up to like 100. So you see, and in general, this floor noise is a bit higher than AB. And the D has less noise here. So this is the main comparison. Now let's compare it what happens with the AB if we go from 4 ohms down to 2 ohms. Okay, and this is 2 ohm versus yeah, 2 ohm versus 4 ohm. This is 2 ohm. So we have less uh, actually more THD. So only 68 which is again not bad. We can see that the floor noise increases quite a lot. The harmonics stay kind of the same. If you can see, they repeat exactly the same. So this one, and if we check the bridged one, which is this one, on the bridge one, you have even more floor noise. So again, this might be influenced because of the channel three and four, because when you I, when I bridged it, I bridged three and four, and three is the bad one as well. Not as bad as one and two, but it's still bad. So this might be influenced, but I don't know. So harmonics stay the same, floor noise increases, floor noise increases, kind of a bit different uh, when you compare it to the class D. So yeah, multitone, let's have a look at the multitone. Four ohm, we have uh, more noise, higher floor noise at the bottom end, quite a lot of noise, not as much as we saw, but quite a lot if we compare it to this one. Yeah, so for this one, you see uh, the class D is noisier, I want to say. Yeah, and even more floor noise at the bottom end. So yeah, this is four ohms. This is bridged, kind of the same, a bit higher floor noise as expected. And this is two ohms. So on two ohms, again, more floor noise as well. Uh, Multitone, eh, I don't know. Where is it? Not bad. All the way up to 12 watts. I don't know. Like this one, for me personally, I don't know what to say about this. 
So for a few watts, it's clean. It's very clean, like down to 0 0.05. Very clean on music. So yeah, I think these are all the measures that I want to share. But yeah, this was a very, very surprising thing. Would I recommend buying this amplifier? Uh, it's a difficult one, but I want to say no, because like with well, the problems that we saw, uh, again, it might be a faulty amplifier. It might be a circuit board kind of thing that they copied and without checking. I don't know. It looks good. It's, it's quite big. It gets hot because obviously it's class AB, but uh, I would need to get a second sample or somebody else that would test it and just to make sure that it's is this unit and not the whole like line that exhibits exactly the same thing. But yeah, so and un 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 unless or until somebody would test a second one or a third one and confirm that everything is fine on that one, uh, uh, I wouldn't buy this one just in case it's an inherited thing in the circuit board that all the amplifiers of this exhibited. But yeah, so at the moment, I wouldn't recommend buying it because there's much more better options, even for the same price. Even like for the same price, you can buy some secondhand stuff uh, from older, some older amplifiers, kind of old school, and those will perform as good or better than this. But this conclusion is class AB better than class D. In this specific case, no. This one way outperforms the old design that this one has. So buy this one for mid bass. Uh, look for something else instead of this one. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.